Every year, thousands of human remains are found in the United States, and in one of every four instances, authorities can't identify the body. That's starting to change. I'm Dave Killen, co-host of The Unidentifieds, a new limited series podcast from The Oregonian and Oregon Live. We go deep into several cold cases and explain the science that's helping experts give these long-forgotten people their names back. Look for The Unidentifieds after you've finished listening to this podcast. Subscribe to The Unidentifieds on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you listen to podcasts. NIL Now with Lauren Sisler and Kevin Jones. If you want to learn more about name, image, and likeness, you need to go to The Source. The NIL Now podcast from Headline Studio and Reddit highlights the biggest storylines with comments from key guests in the college and high school NIL space. NIL is not a cherry on top. It needs to be thought about as a part of these young men and women's future to, you know, further their careers. You should be able to leave college with something. Subscribe to NIL Now on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you listen to podcasts. What's a Friday without another mock draft? We did our first one together as a podcast last week. PFF graded it an A. So let's see if we can go from an A to an A plus in our mock draft 2.0. Strictly Stripes edition. Welcome into another Strictly Stripes pre-draft mock draft podcast edition. Muhammad Ahmad, Andrew Gills, and Mike Nizak here to wrap up the week with you. And just to remind you all before we get started, make sure that you sign up for our Strictly Stripes newsletter. It is very easy. It's free. It's in your inbox every morning. Make sure you go to cleveland.com slash newsletters and select the Strictly Stripes newsletter. You get all of the reporting insights and colorful opinions from me, Andrew, and Mike every day. And again, it's for free, cleveland.com slash newsletters. So last time we used the pro football focused draft simulator. We have the settings the same as last time in terms of care for positional value, drafting for needs and randomness. So we're not going to change that. We're going to try our hand to see how things go. So we are going to get started. We have entered the draft. Do we want to offer a trade? No, we do not. So we are going to jump straight to number 28. The clock is ticking. It's moving. And we are on the clock. All right. So here's who we got, guys. So you can see my screen. Um, So just to tell you real quick who went off the board the last couple picks, Michael Mayer went to the Cowboys two picks ago. Uh, Kalija Kansi went to the uh, Buffalo Bills after that. Brian Breesey went to... Uh, The New York Giants, Deontay Banks, went to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Darnell Wright and Broderick Jones also went off the board uh, at 21 and 22. So that's who's off the clock, or off the board, rather, excuse me. Here's who we have. Got Dalton Kincaid out of Utah, one of the favorite tight ends of the draft. Anton Harrison, a project we've mentioned, who would be a good fit at right tackle. Will McDonald at edge rusher out of Iowa State. Emmanuel Forbes, a really interesting cornerback out of Mississippi State who set records in college. Felix Anodike Uzama, another edge rusher from Kansas State. And Mozzie Smith from Michigan, who I will say for those who didn't tune in last week, he was our first pick uh, in the first round. So, Oh, and also got, of course, Dewan Jones, another interesting uh, prospect at right tackle the Bengals could look at. So got Kincaid, Harrison, McDonald, Forbes, Anodike Uzama. Oh, and B.J. Ojulari from LSU, another edge rusher. What do you guys think? Do you still feel good about Maisie Smith? Do we want to repeat history, or do you think it's time to change things up a little bit with Dalton Kincaid on the board? I don't see how this would be likely, I mean, with Kincaid there, but, I mean, they would not probably pass him up. I think so, yeah. Andrew, I, I think that's pretty That's pretty fair. Yeah, I, the Kincaid, I, you know, it's, it's funny. I think, you know, we've talked about um, – we talked about Mayer before. I know Mike and I, uh, when we talked on uh, on the podcast that we did on Wednesday, um, you know, we, we, we talked about Mayer a good bit. I, I think he's the best tight end in the draft, personally. Um, so I think, I don't know. I I think they w- I think Kincaid would be the pick here. I'll put it like that. I I would I would rather take Mayer if he were there, but I think uh, I think Kincaid is the guy just because. 
especially when you look at the board and, you know, there's not a, uh, you know, there's not a, an obvious pick, I think, uh, you know, an obvious pick other than Kincaid, I should say. So I think Kincaid's it. Yeah, I think so too. And I think um, I thought a little bit about Forbes because I think he's really good, but I also think Kincaid is just that good that you don't pass him up. Like you said, um, with respect to Mozzie Smith, I mean, we picked him last week, but that's because Kincaid was already off the board in that draft. So I think it's a pretty unanimous pick. We are going to select Dalton Kincaid out of Utah with a number 28 overall pick. I think that's a good one, and I'm glad that it was unanimous because those are always the best picks. To the second round we go. We are cruising, 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 pushing through to the 60th pick of the second round. Or, I'm sorry, the 60th pick overall, 29th pick of the second round. This is a little interesting. So we got off the board uh, Tyreek Stevenson, Devin A. Chain. Two really interesting players, both off the board. A-Chain, the running back from the Texas A&M. Tyreek Stevenson out of Miami, Florida. Keanu Benton, who was an interesting interior rusher, also off the board. Those are three guys I would have liked. Keely Ringo also went to the Seahawks a few picks before that. And Cody Mao, uh, one of Andrew's favorite guys out of North Dakota State, is also off the board. So some significant names there. Siaki Ika, man, I would have loved that guy from Baylor. He went right before to the Buffalo Bills. But here's who we've got. Uh, we've got Thule. I'm going to say this wrong. Tui How Pluto, dare you Edgerton. just pass over Tanner McKee, Muhammad? Oh, come it's on. Disrespectful. Tuli, Tui Paluto, edge rusher out of USC. Sam Laporta, tight end from Iowa. I mean, I think that's already off the board with uh, Kincaid being selected. Nathaniel Dell, wide receiver from Houston. Matthew Bergeron out of Syracuse, uh, offensive tackle. And then another Syracuse guy right next to him, Garrett Williams, cornerback. Tra- Travius Hodges Tomlinson at cornerback. Zach Charbonnet, running back from UCLA, and Nick Herbig, an edge rusher from Wisconsin. I think really it comes down to Bergeron, Williams, Hodges Tomlinson, and Charbonnet, guys. What do you think? I, I think Bergeron is interesting. I think, Mike, you've talked about him before. He could be a, a good project at tackle. I like Garrett Williams, too. I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's a bad pick to have at corner, especially this early in the draft. But what do you guys think? those names I mentioned, or am I completely glossing over Zach Charbonnet right now? Yeah, I mean, I've been on Charbonnet since the start. I wouldn't see any reason to sort of change, especially, you know, you even you know, arguably get the best tight end prospect to pair him up with a dynamite running back. Um, I know this team's now tilting way into the offense in terms of, like, uh, talent-wise and, and money-wise, but I, I don't see – why you would pass that opportunity up, especially given Joe Mixon's situation, all your lack of depth at running back. Um, he's ready to step in. He, he's excellent in all sort of phases of the game. Um, I mean, what else do you need? It's like it's, the, it's, set, it's set up perfectly. Is it perfect, Andrew? Is it that perfect? No, perfect, perfect is too strong a word. Um, but I think, um, you know, but I think Charbonnet, like – he, I think he's really good, and I think he fills a void, um, you know, and I think he's probably better than, you know, end of the second round guy. I think he's actually a really talented running back. Who was our second round pick last time? Was I think it was Julius Brents. It uh, was. Cornerback out of Kansas State. State. Yeah, so I, with, with him gone, you know, Brents is one of my guys who I really like this draft. Uh, I'm cool with Charbonnet. Like, just, again, you know, Mike and I mentioned before, you take a tight end, you take a running back in the first first two rounds, like you're talking about an offense that, you know, assuming Jonah Williams is still here, even if he's not, you're talking about an offense that, you know, should be averaging 30 points a game. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm cool with Charbonnet. Uh, you know, I think he fills a need, and I think he's, uh, you know, he's going to come in, and I think he would come in, and you know, he would be an immediate three-down running back for them uh, if you need him to. And, you know, I, I, I think that it's just, it, it makes too much sense. Yeah, I like the bell cow potential. I love his PFF grades. I mean, you look at his rushing grade last year. It was a 93, close to a 94. You know, the Bengals moved to more of a gap zone look, which, you know, even with how Joe Mixon did, I mean, when he actually did do well in the middle of the season, it was when they made that shift up until he kind of had that weird month of December where he kind of dipped again. Before that, they ran really well in the gap. This guy, Charbonnet, runs really well in the gap. 92.5 gap grade, 86.2 zone run grade, which kind of goes hand in hand with what I mentioned. I like it. I think we're going to have to roll with it. We just missed out on him last week. We're not going to miss out on him this week. So with the 60th overall pick, the Bengals select Zach Charbonnet. 
running back at a UCLA. Charbonnet. Right, this, a. Charbonnet. Thank a. you, Andrew. I, I am horrible with the pronunciation a. if you would think otherwise. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we are at the 92nd overall pick. We are in the third round. So, again, to kind of take stock of, stock of who's off the board, I'm kind of bummed out about this one. I actually would have considered him in the third round. Blake Freeland, uh, Blake Freeland, a uh, tackle out of BYU, went to the Buffalo Bills before the Bengals. Tank Bigsby, um, who – wait, did we pick him last week? I think we did pick him last week, didn't we? No, I – uh, Or did we pick – the McBride kid from UAB. We picked McBride. Yeah, you know, I picked Bigsby yeah. in my mock draft. So, yeah, we we picked McBride. But Bigsby's off the board. Marvin Mims, wide receiver out of Oklahoma, is off the board. I mean, if you really want a depth at wide, wide receiver with Tyler Boyd entering a contract year, you could have flirted with that. But Williams, Garrett Williams, who we mentioned, uh, also off the board. Zach Harrison, the edge rusher from Ohio State, off the board. And Tyler Scott, the local kid out of UC, Cincinnati Bearcat, off the board. Uh, those are the notable guys off the board. So here's who we've got. Um, we still got Travius Hodges Tomlinson, who we mentioned, the TCU corner. Uh, one of Andrew's favorites, who I think we can talk about, Andre Carter II, edge rusher out of Army. Uh, Michael Wilson, a wide receiver from Stanford. Anthony Johnson Jr., who we had as a safety selected in the fifth round last week. He's on the board right now. This is an interesting one. Uh, one of the more interesting safeties of the draft that I don't think we talked about last week. Jordan Battle from Alabama. His uh, teammate Brian Branch is the highest ranked safety in the draft. So he's already off the board by this point. Isaiah McGuire, Carl Brooks, two edge rushers from Missouri and Bowling Green, respectively. I mean, I don't know. What, this is actually an interesting one. I think you could go a lot of different ways with this. I'll let you guys kind of take the floor. I mean, who, who comes to mind from those names I mentioned? Yeah, I, I really like Andre Carter. Um, you know, I know he's kind of uh, – he's, he's fallen in the last, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months. You know, he didn't really have a good combine. Um, you know, he, he's – and he's certainly more of a project, uh, which I know Mike kind of talks about is something that this team shouldn't do. But, you know, I, I, I think that Andre Carter would be a good pick just because, you know, you need something in your pass rush. Uh, you need to add something there. I think it, at the very least you can kind of have him as a situational pass rusher. You know, he's really long. He's six foot seven. Uh, you're talking about a guy who, if he can come in and and kind of just give you, you know, uh, give you a burst on third downs, on on obvious passing situations, I, I think you're feeling good about that. And I think, you know, he's kind of has the frame. I know Army has some, you know, with Army, there's it's a different conversation with anybody else. There's, you know, different physical requirements with those kids um, that you have to pass. So I think kind of getting him in a in a pro weight room in a pro, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, uh, health, what a health and fitness regimen, basically of, uh, of a yeah. professional football player. I think, I think that'd really help him. Um, so I think you, you're looking at him for 2024, but in 2023, I think you can get some kind of something off the edge, which I mean, this team needs a lot of. So, uh, I like Andre Carter there. What's the top, what do you think, Mike? What's, the, what's the top three there again? So we've got not including Tanner McKee. Sorry, Andrew. Travis Hodges Tomlinson, cornerback from TCU, Andre Carter, who we talked about, and Michael Wilson, who's a wide receiver from Stanford. And then you got a few edge rushers and a safety like Jordan Battle beneath them. Yeah, that's not a great board to end the third round. Uh, no. Tomlinson yeah. is, what, 5'8". I don't think – I mean, he has standout uh, athleticism and everything, but I don't think the Bengals would, would select him. Um, you know, Carter uh, – you know, I don't, I'm not sure how much we could count on him for this, uh, you know, this fall, but he might be the best player available at that point on that board. Um, and, you know, I'm not opposed to drafting an edge rusher. Um, so uh, I can, uh, I'll give that one to, to Andrew. Yeah. You know, I was looking at Tomlinson. I was leaning more cornerback, but I mean, like with what you've got, that's not the best board for corners. I mean, you have to go all the way down before you want to find a good corner, and that's Jalen Jones out of Texas A&M who maybe we revisit that in the upcoming rounds, but he's 5'8". He doesn't – he plays well in zone, and I think his athleticism is fine, but it's not quite the Lou Anarumo fit. I think with Carter, you know, whether you have him for depth this year or you count on him later on, like two, three years down the road, depending on what happens to Trey Hendrickson, I don't think it's the worst pick in the world. I think it's not a bad guy to have with – Joseph Osai and Cam Sample. So I'm going to concede to that, just given kind of how the draft board is. So we're 
Going to do it. We're going to select Andre Carter the second out of Army, edge rusher with the 92nd overall pick. All right, we are about halfway through our draft, but when we come back, we are going to see if we can make some more late-round splashes, which I think is what got us that good grade last week, so we can go from that A to that elusive A+. plus. We'll be right back on the Strictly Stripes podcast. Hey guys, if you love college football, we think you'll like the College Football Survivor Show. I'm Doug Maurice, and my co-host Shahan Jeharaja and I, each week we talk about the best programs, best coaches, best players in the sport. It's all football, no off-field stuff, no legislation. It's about the teams that are going to matter most in the playoff race. Will Georgia three-peat? Always on the lookout for angry Bama. The Big Ten, Ohio State, Michigan battling at the top and Penn State on the rise. The Pac-12 matters again, not just USC, but Oregon and Washington as well. The playoff is expanding. Expand your podcast listening try the college football survivor show wherever you find podcasts all right thanks for staying with us on the strictly stripes podcast so we have gone through the first three rounds of our pff draft simulator mock draft and before we get back into our fourth round pick we want to remind you guys to sign up for our subtext service cincinnati football insider again it is an exclusive community of Bengals fans where we send you and I mean you directly to your phone, all of the latest updates, insights, and analysis on the team that you're not getting on social media and not on the internet, on our website, as soon as we get it to you. It is free to start. It's a free two-week trial. And if you want to stick with it, it's $4.99 a month. You can cancel it any time during the trial. But, but I'm going to tell you this. When you join, like our other subscribers who have joined, you are going to be glad that you are a part of the greatest class of Bengals fans there again go to cleveland.com slash bangles click on that blue banner at the top of the page to sign up all right so we are in the fourth round of our mock draft all right so here's what we've got off the board uh i hate to break it to you andrew but uh zach Kuntz from old dominion the tight end who's freakishly athletic uh he's off the board he went to the cowboys two picks ago anthony bradford a guard from lsu went to the bills after that Noah Sewell, linebacker from Oregon, went to the Giants. Not much to worry about there. Uh, Yasser Abdullah, an edge rusher who I think would have been an interesting fit for the Bengals had we not taken Andre Carter. He went to the Jaguars. And Jalen Jones from Texas A&M. We mentioned his name earlier. I think that's a quarterback we could have looked at. He goes to the Chargers. So those guys are off the board. So here's who we've got. we still got Tanner McKee. Hi there. Um, we got Anthony Johnson at safety. Kobe Turner. Interior edge rusher from Wake Forest, who I want to get to in a second. Sean Tucker, running back from Syracuse. Ronnie Hickman, Ohio from – that was uh, – I did not say that correctly. Ronnie Hickman, safety from Ohio State. And Eli Ricks, cornerback from Alabama. I think those are the best players available. I think with Johnson, it's interesting because we picked him last week around later in the fifth round, but – you know, we've talked about this. I don't think safety is that pressing of a need. I think you could even go in this draft without getting a safety. I really like Kobe Turner. I've said it before. I think he's underrated. He did not get invited to the combine, but his PFF grades are great, uh, both in pass and run defenses. And, you know, I understand he's 6'2". He's just under 300 pounds, which I think if you're the Bengals, you want a little bit more height and weight. If you're an interior guy, you want that 6'3 to 315 range. I could get with DJ Reader and DJ Hill, but I don't know. I think this is the guy that's very underrated. I think you can put him next to Zach Carter for depth. And depending on what happens with DJ Reader after this coming season, I think those are not bad options to have. What do you guys think? I think Kobe Turner might be the guy, but I want I want your all's perspective on that. Can you show us more of the board? I, I can't really see. Yeah, I need to see. Sure. So we're we're pulling up his grades right now, which the uh, draft simulator well, not, lets not you him. do. Like who's else is no, available? No, no, yeah, I need to see like more players available. So we've got Anthony Johnson, who I mentioned, safety from Iowa State. Sean Tucker from Syracuse, running back. I didn't mention his name. I mean, he's a center, wow, and Juice I don't think Scruggs. What a name! Juice Scruggs. What a name! Yeah, center from Penn State. I only say his name because it's an interesting name. But the Bengals don't need a center. Ronnie Hickman from Ohio State, who's a safety, and Eli Ricks cornerback from Alabama. Keep going. If you want to go farther down, you've got Andrew Voorhees, a uh, guard from USC who hurt himself at the combine. Uh, Ivan Pace Jr., the Cincinnati kid at linebacker. Talked about him a bunch. Vilami Fahoko, 
edge rusher from San Jose State. And if you're looking at another running back, Deuce Vaughn from Kansas State, also still on the board. If you want to go even farther, you've got an interior guy, Keandre Coburn out of Texas, who played with Joseph Osai at one point when he was at Texas as well. What do you guys think? Better options there? I, I so I really Coburn, like Voorhees. I think I drafted Coburn in the uh, last mock draft I did. I mean, he's he's interesting. His production isn't, like, great uh, in college, but he seems like, um, in, in terms of what the Bengals look for at that uh, defensive tackle uh, position, um, he would fit the – Fit the bill can can get to the passer, but um, I think is really effective. Uh, run stopper as well has got the size um, and and athleticism. I think um, you know his production is probably not where Kobe Turner's was, but I'd I'd prefer him in terms of uh, the fit and and just how you how he projects out. I don't know, Andrew. If you had to pick between Turner and uh, Coburn, like where do you kind of lean based on what Mike just said? So uh, neither. Um, I really like Voorhees. Um, you know, Voorhees really? is the guy to me who you know we're talking about the offensive line. Uh, you know, obviously there's questions there with you know what's going on at tackle, right tackle specifically. Um, you know, you you feel good about where you're at everywhere else. You've got. Orlando Brown set for a while. Cordell Volson set for a while. Ted Karras still has two years left. Ted uh, Alex Cap I think has three years left. So you're feeling good about the yep. four spots, but Voorhees is a guy who probably wouldn't be on the board at this point if he hadn't have torn his ACL uh, at, right. the, at the combine. So I don't know. I, I I just think that this could be a really nice value pick where you know the offensive line you've got you know options there. You know with Jonah in the fold. You know, you've got Cody Ford as a backup option now. You've got Leo Collins, who, you know, is still recovering from an injury. There's there's options there, but I, I like Voorhees. You know, he's six foot six. Uh, he played guard in college. I wonder if he can play tackle. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I think that he could just be a really, really nice kind of draft and stash. I know you already did that with it, uh, with Andre Carter, but, you know, those to me are, are two mid-round guys who – you know, you're feeling really, really good about going into 2024. I don't know. I mean, you're right. Voorhees is better than what the board has him now just because of his injury. But I just think you're that set at the offensive line. I understand the depth isn't great with, like, Max Sharping and Cody Ford. I, I get it could be better. But, I mean, let's be real. Like, with exception to kind of the way things went in the playoffs last year with all those injuries, I don't think the Bengals should invest that much stock in depth, if it's already there, I mean, I get it. It's not the best, but like, I think you got better options. Like whether it's Kobe Turner or like uh, Mike mentioned, Keandre Coburn. I think you've got good options there. I don't know. I yeah, I think Mike makes a good point. Although Turner has like the the athleticism and production, I think Coburn has like the bill in terms of like the size. I mentioned like he's six two. He's well over three thirty. You know, he's. I mean, you can look at his PFF grades. Pulling it up right now, um, pass rush grades about an eighty. True pass set pass rush grade is about the same, which is good, I think, especially compared to how the Bengals did in the pass rush last year. I think we'll go bold on this one and go Keandre Coburn with the 131st overall pick, the interior defensive tackle out of Texas. All right, so we're going into the fifth round. This is where you kind of get in the coin flip territory a little bit, and I think like last week, this is going to be the same thing, but we'll see how it plays out. Okay. So, um, again, just a quick rundown. We're going to tell you who went off the board with the last couple picks. Uh, the Colts, who traded with the Bills right before the Bengals, picked Dontavion Wicks, a wide receiver from Virginia. Uh, you also had Jarrett Patterson, another guard off the board from Notre Dame. And another Notre Dame guy, Brandon Joseph at safety, who I think we could have talked about if he was on the board. Um, and some edge rushers like Nick Hampton from Appalachian State and Cameron Young from Mississippi State, an interior guy, all off the board. I think really Joseph was the only one that would have been an interesting conversation to have, along with maybe, maybe Davis Allen, although I think the Bengals are good at tight end at this point with Drew Sample being there. So here's who we've got on the board. Somehow, someway, Anthony Johnson is the favorite on the board in the fifth round again for this mock draft that we do together and for the one that I did and that Andrew did. He just seems to be a perfect fifth round fit. But you do also have Ronnie Hickman, who we mentioned, the Ohio State safety. Uh, as far as edge rushers go, you still have Valami Fajoko from San Jose State. 
Also got Jose Ramirez from Eastern Michigan, Mike's former territory at one point. Um, as far as cornerbacks go, you also have Starling Thomas, the fifth out of UAB. If you want to look at wide receivers, the best one available is Jalen Moreno Cropper from Fresno State. And if you want one more interior guy on the defensive line, you got Broderick Martin from Western Kentucky, who I actually covered at one point. So great guy. But out of those names, I mean, should, should we just say forget it? Just just go with Johnson, roll the dice, just say he's meant to be there in the fifth round? Or do you think there's a debate to be had with Ronnie Hickman as far as who's the better safety? No, I, I like Johnson. Uh, you know, I think we picked him in our last mock draft. Uh, I picked him uh, in one of mine. I just, you know, you're talking about a player who, you know, I remember he, you know, reading he was a captain at Iowa State. Uh, he played multiple different positions. And, you know, when you get to this point in the draft, you need guys that are versatile. You need guys that are going to come in and, and kind of, you know, help with, you know, culture is a kind of an overused term, but, you know, you, you don't want a guy who's kind of coming in as a, you know, as a troublemaker or anything like that. And, you know, by all, you know, by all accounts, I'm not saying anybody else is or anybody else we're not going to pick is, but, you know, I just think that Johnson from everything you read about him, uh, you know, he comes in, he's going to do his job and, you know, you can develop him into a safety that can, you know, can actually play meaningful reps uh, down the line. But early on, he's a good special teamer and he's a good depth safety. So I really like him. Sounds like a do you, plan. Do you like him? Do you like him or do you, do you want to th- you want to consider Ronnie Hickman there, Mike? I, I, I go with uh, Andrew. All right. I, I'm going to be honest. I have just kind of looked at Hickman's grades a little bit. Better coverage grade. He had an 89 uh, overall grade, whereas Johnson had about a 75. But again, like just to preface what we've mentioned, you know, safety's not the biggest need. It's a depth need, but it's one of the lowest depth needs at this point, really, in the draft. Um, and I wanted to kind of change up the monotony. I think we've had Johnson on so many of our mock drafts that I thought we could change it up. But I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So I think, you know, Andrew made a good case. Mike is with him. I have a lot of respect for Johnson's playing ability. And I think he'd be a great fit for what the Bengals need on special teams, like Andrew said. So let's just do it again. With the 163rd overall pick, the Bengals select Anthony Johnson. Safety out of Iowa State. All right. More coin flips. More coin flips. The Bengals love coin flips. Sarcasm there, if you know what I'm talking about. All right. We are just about... On the board. That was like the longest like transition this whole draft. Uh, we are on the board with the 206th overall pick. All right. Let's see who was off the board. Miles Brooks at Louisiana Tech, cornerback taken by the Bills. Tyler Lacey, edge rusher, went to the Texans out of Oklahoma State. Evan Hall, running back from Northwestern, going to the Raiders. And let's see here. Keaton Mitchell, another running back to East from East Carolina to the Texans. I would want to talk about this guy because he was a Cincinnati kid, and I think he would have been an interesting fit. But Trey Tucker, wide receiver out of UC, goes to the Chargers. I'm a little bummed out about that. I actually didn't realize he was still on the board. As far as who is on the board at wide receiver, again, Jalen Moreno Cropper from Fresno State. You got him uh, with the interior defensive rush. You got Jonah Tavai from San Diego State. Another interior rusher, Jared Clark out of Coastal Carolina. Jason Taylor, a safety from Oklahoma State. We already picked one. Ooh, one of Andrew's favorites from last week who I don't think we picked, but Dorian uh, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, quarterback out of UCLA. Bengals still need a backup. Uh, Brandon Allen has not been signed. And Trevor Simeon, if they're considering him, they haven't signed him either. Uh, another interior pass rusher, Jacob Slade from Michigan State. I mean, if you want to entertain another backup quarterback, <laughs> Stetson Bennett from Georgia, he's he's still on the board. I'm not surprised, but somewhat surprised. I mean, we could go through even more names. Like, you got O'Shawn Mathis, edge rusher from Nebraska, Ventral Miller, linebacker from Florida. But, I mean, do you want to look at more names, or do you think we've got enough names to consider at this point, guys? Yeah, we're, Andrew, you I'm seem good. like you're excited about Thompson Robinson. Yeah, I like him. I, I think that, um, you know, you want a quarterback that can, you know, there's like, I, I think I said this last time too. Um, they all run together. Uh, there's, there's kind of a philosophical conversation you can have about quarterbacks that can run and, and how you want to evaluate, um, you know, are they, you know, what a, what a low floor quarterback means, what a low floor quarterback is, um, you know, but I think with Dorian Thompson Robinson, you're talking about a guy, I mean, he played at a high level in college, played at UCLA. 
Uh, he can move. I, I just think that he gives you kind of a dynamic that, you know, you might need, uh, you know, I mentioned the the quote about Tom Moore last time and the, uh, you know, what happens if Manning goes down? Well, they'd be kind of the same boat here, but um, I think that y- you do need a backup and, you know, you might as well draft a backup that can, you know, give you a little bit of spunk and a little bit of a, a different look when he enters the game. So uh, I like Jordan Thompson Robinson. Yeah, do you like Jordan Thompson Robinson, Mike? Oh, I, I, you know, he's fine. I, I drafted a back <laughs> quarter, uh, Aiden O'Connell in my last mock draft. Um, you know, I think they've got to do something at quarterback. They've got to bring somebody in, and it's, um, you know, round six or seven, and, you know, that's not bad value for the sixth round um, to, to get him there. I just think you have to have somebody to compete um, in training camp um, with Jake Browning and um, try to elevate that room a little bit after, you know, not re-signing Brandon Allen. So, um not not against that pick at this point in the draft. Yeah, I mean, there's really no one else that interests me other than Moreno Cropper, but, I mean, they're in better shape at wide receiver depth-wise, um, ironically, compared to quarterback. Because, yeah, you need one more body in there to compete with Jake Browning to back up who could be the league's highest-paid player, like we talked about on our previous podcast, if you missed that earlier this week. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to roll with you guys on this one with the 206th. Overall pick, the Bengals select Dorian Thompson-Robinson, quarterback at a UCLA, reunited with Devin Asiasi, another UCLA Bruin on the Bengals. All right, last but not least, we are in the seventh round. Who will be the Bengals' version of Mr. Irrelevant? We're going to find out right now as we're on the clock. I don't really think there's a reason for me to mention the names off the board at this point because I don't think there's anybody that really would have stood out, but... Moreno Cropper, hanging tight. He is still up on the board as the Bengals' favorite. Uh, Jonah Tavai, also up there. Jacob Slade, also up there. Um, Two linebackers we considered last week still on the board. Troy Brown from Ole Miss. Mikel Jones from Syracuse, who we ended up picking as our sort of 2023 draft version of Marcus Bailey. If you look at some other names, you got MJ Anderson, the edge rusher from Iowa State. And I'm going to maybe say his name wrong. Dewan Johnson, interior rusher from Toledo. If you want another linebacker, Charlie Thomas from Georgia Tech. And if you really want a cornerback at this point, Tawan Muller from Indiana is there. But I want to see, was Carrington Valentine taken off the board? I I need to see this. I'm trying to look. Well, it looks like he was taken. It appears as though he was taken. I would have actually loved to talk about him given – how I think he's a sleeper pick this late in the draft, and he's a he's a kid from Cincinnati who played at Kentucky, so he's been around the area for quite some time. But do you want to just say, eh, you know, at a wide receiver for depth behind Tyler Boyd, contract year, or do you think we should maybe consider Troy Brown or Mikel Jones once again for our final pick? Well, um, considering I have not extensively watched any of these players play, um, I don't hate receiver here. Um, you know, I think you need depth there. Um, you know, you, you do need, you know, a kind of a four or five, uh, to kind of come in. And I think, uh, you know, special teams are obviously pretty key. You know, everybody kind of always seems to gloss over that fact whenever you draft a receiver in the fourth, fifth round linebacker or whatever, that they're going to play special teams. That's how a lot of these guys make the team. So Nick Scott made, uh, made the team in LA and, you know, he kind of rose up to be a starting safety. So I'm good with receiver. Um, I think um, Moreno Cropper works for me. He runs a 4-4 four, four apparently. Um, so, I mean, that's he fast. All right. Uh, you know, that'll come in handy on punt coverage. So, sure. Yeah, 5'11", 172, one of the craftier route runners as described by Pro Football Focus. Yeah, I don't know. I think with 172 pounds, it's interesting to see how that translates, but that's why he's got the the weight room and the training staff, and if that speed holds up, I'm sure Darren Simmons is going to be a happy man, and so would uh, Duke Tobin and Zach Taylor. So we're going to top it off by selecting Jalen Moreno Cropper out of Fresno State with the 206th overall pick. All right, so we're going to finish this out. Oh, Carrington Valentine was on the board. I missed him. Oh, well. it's I think wide receiver was more of a depth need anyway at this point, so I think it's all good. All right, let's see how we did. We were draft. Let's see. We were given a draft grade of an A, so didn't do better, didn't do worse. But let's see how our specific grades were given for our picks. Okay, 
pat on the back. Dalton Kincaid, our first pick, was a A+. Plus. Uh, Zach Charbonnet, the running back from UCLA, was a C+. Plus. The PFF is always weird about those second, third round picks. It's hard to get an A with them for whatever reason. But we got an A- minus with Andre Carter, so good-looking Andrew. I think that was a, a well-discussed pick. Keandre Coburn was a B+. Plus. Good job, Mike. I think for a fourth round pick, it's good to have a B+. Plus. And then we just killed it with three straight A pluses. Anthony Johnson, A plus. Dorian Thompson Robinson, A plus. Jalen Moreno Cropper, A plus. So maybe, I think it's not a big deal that we missed out on Carrington Valentine. Maybe if we do one more mock draft, which I think we will in the coming days, uh, whether it be ourselves or with our orange and brown talk people or our Buckeye talk people, I think we'll definitely do at least one more mock draft. So maybe Carrington Valentine's considered again. But, man, what do you guys think? Like, did you kind of expect to come out like that? Or do you think, like, oh, we just we just had that edge. We should have just had that A-plus. I mean, like, how, how do you feel just looking at those results? I think, you know, I you like know the it fact only that. judges you on, like, the number that they're ranked, right? Like, <laughs> Mike, let's just play along like, with it. It's not like a sub – like, it's not like a taking into account other things. It's like they're A-pluses because he was, like, Anthony Johnson was, like, ranked the 60th best player. Uh, Dorian Thompson was ranked the hundredth best player when he or one hundred fiftieth when he was selected. So like, it's not like you realize that, right? I, I think it's I think it's a little bit more than that, though. I, I don't know. Like, I think it's also based on like the positions of need and how early you draft those positions of need. Like, I think it's a little bit of both. I don't know if it's completely just that, but I could be wrong. I believe that's what someone told me once. Someone I mean, told you once. That sounds very <laughs> official. I mean, I know who it was, but I'm not going to say it because I'm pretty oh, sure you guys know who it is. It's a mystery well, no, I mean, person. you guys know who it is, but I'm not going to expose them on this podcast. So, I uh, like with any source, you got to keep it confidential. Got to keep your sources tight. You feel me? But no, in seriousness, like I mean, did you guys kind of expect it to go like that? Like you, you guys feel pretty good about those picks overall? Yeah, well, I mean, the one thing that, you know, I would kind of say looking at that, you know, you, you got tight end, you got a running back. Um, I think, you know, with that board, you would still have questions about what's going on at running back with Joe Mixon. Uh, you know, is Zach Charbonnet enough to to move on from, from Joe Mixon? Is Joe Mixon still around? Uh, I do like the fact that you, you know, all right, you being all three of us, uh, upgraded the off- or defensive line. Uh, you get Andre Carter. Uh, Keandre Coburn, I, I think that you get, you know, an edge player, an interior player uh, in the middle rounds. So that'll help. You get some safety depth. You get a backup quarterback. I think, you know, you did, you did, we did well in terms of, you know, filling some needs. Um, I think there were some spots that, you know, we, we got good value. The the offensive tackle would really be the, the position kind of leaving this draft that I would feel, you know, a little uneasy about if I were the Bengals, just because you're not sure, you know, Leo Collins is, you know, recovering from an injury, Cody Ford's new and coming in and you need him to kind of play well. Uh, you know, you've got Jonah Williams and that whole situation. So, yeah, I, I think that um, otherwise, you know, it's hard not to feel good about that. Yeah, I think, you know, I feel the same way about cornerback because obviously we, we, you know, the hope is that Chidobe Awuzie is ready to go by week one of the 2023 season. But Nothing's guaranteed, and you know maybe you play it safe and make sure he's really ready to go, so he doesn't play that week. I mean, you got Sidney Jones to kind of be that Eli Apple because it looks like Eli Apple, I think, is out the door at this point. Trey Flowers, probably the same thing. But you know, you look at what they did last year. Even though they drafted Cam Taylor Britt, they signed Alan George as an undrafted free agent. A really good story there. He makes the 53-man roster at the end of the year, and maybe he does again this year. So you still have him. Maybe you do the same thing this year, whether it's with a Carrington Valentine, if he's not picked, or any other names that I didn't mention, kind of like who Alan George was last year. You know, I think that, you know, is fine. Or maybe you swap Anthony Johnson with one of those corners and you get an undrafted free agent safety, which, you know, Mike mentioned a while back. That's an option that could work. I mean, a lot of the Bengals defensive backs are undrafted, like Mike Hilton, Michael Thomas, you know, we mentioned Alan George. Like, they're, they're no strangers to, you know, picking up undrafted guys in that room, so... I think you can't be too worried about that. I think they've got a pretty good plan there. Stay with us next week. We're going to give you everything you need to know going into the NFL draft, which starts less than a week from today. Uh, We're going to maybe, again, don't want to guarantee anything, but we might have a crossover with our Orange and Brown Talk colleagues in Cleveland and our Buckeye Talk friends, including Doug LaMaurice in Columbus. Make sure you stay tuned for that and much more draft previews to round things up. But once again, for myself... 
Andrew and Mike. I'm Muhammad Ahmad. Have a great weekend. See you Monday.